Hello, race car fans. So in 1992, Alfa Romeo's 155 GTA claims the Italian Super Turismo Championship. And so that inspired them to develop a new uh, DTM race car for 1993's uh, season. And that is called the 155 V6 Ti. So, hmm. apparently this model is for the 90, 1996 version. But the car was developed for uh, 1993 according to uh, the internet. And uh, essentially they totally redid the whole vehicle. They turned the engine to a longitudinal position whereas a regular road going car I think had a transverse engine. So they now made it longitudinal. And then they also gave the vehicle four wheel drive or all -wheel, an all wheel drive system which worked really well in rainy conditions of the DTM. Um, just reading this card here if there's any other logical information in here that I could read. No. <laughs> I cannot. But here we see here, we've got the colorways. So I'm not sure if Ye this Jägermeister 10 won the season or what, but this car was really successful racing. So out of uh, 20 races in the 1993 season at least, it won 12 of 20 races. So, But it did compete up until 1996. So... That's what I learned about the vehicle. I also learned that uh, this engine is supposed to be making around 420 horsepower. And uh, because it has a carbon fiber body, the weight was only like 1,040 kilograms. So, pretty light. Okay, so let's take a look at these images here. I, they're not the same car. I couldn't really find images of the same vehicle. But uh, this image shows this crazy front end. There have been many different front ends of uh, this, this vehicle in real life. But this is the one that matches this model the most that I could find. And the, the wheels as well match the most. And it's interesting that they put these... Like, I don't know, what is, what is this thing? Is it a sun blocker? Or some sort of vent where it sucks air out of the cabin or something? I don't understand why they would do that. Like, why would you block off the vision in the side window? Yeah, it just seems strange to me. It's on this red car as well. So, it's very interesting. So this tail end here, this is the best image I could find with a rear end like that. Other ones, you know, are different. But Kyosha did simulate it. There's literally two exhaust pipes inside of a rectangular box. So, really strange. You know, why they would, I'm, I don't know why they would build a box around those exhaust tips. Oh, any any speculation? Please leave a comment. And yeah, But mostly is this thing. I, I just don't understand what why they would do that. But Kyosha put it into their model. So, well, I try to learn about these cars, you know. I apologize that a lot of my information is incorrect. I'm just learning off the internet, but it seems like a lot of that information is wrong. But I'm counting on the car community to help educate me as to what what the heck this is why it would be there all right well it's obviously a white car i'm just trying to spin this tire this thing doesn't want to roll at all that thing's there's so much friction and also these are some really weak tires from kyosho there's totally slab sided it, like there's no curvature to the sidewall at all it's just really weird it, it doesn't look like a tire it looks like a thick piece of heat shrink tubing or something all right well anyways uh that's supposed to be a vent i think on the real car but naturally there's nothing there and then i don't know why it would have a lip here as well it's strange okay uh there's some sort of marker here oh i think that's the shamrock the triangular shamrock it's just a this is a white car you can't see the triangle you can only see the green shamrock okay and then is this the fuel filler i i, I don't know what it is i look at the real photograph i can't tell what it is i think it might be a fuel port but please leave a comment if you know better i'm just kind of guessing here the door handles do stick out uh, no additional paint though but I think it's probably body colored on the real car. So yeah, this is a really interesting front end. Uh, <laughs> I think it's kind of ugly. 
uh, I, I wouldn't say this is an attractive looking vehicle because like it seems like the whole thing is frowning it's like sad it's like it's a sad vehicle it's had a sad day racing it's about to cry <laughs> it's just I mean it could be exaggerated by the fact that this this uh, light is crooked but even if we just look at this side it just the way it's like curved it, that that turn signal it's just a sad looking car so it's too bad look at this interesting the little uh, side wings here and there's a little tiny bit of air passing between right there black paint here a little textured surface textured and the alpha badge there mm, let's see how good it is wow it's actually better than i thought it would be you can almost read like some text in there and then what's happening here it's hard to tell but there are actually some vertical streaks there I can't see it on my computer's my uh, camera screen, but maybe the YouTube will show it better. Okay, so it's a central uh, wiper blade. Seems to be raised and painted black. Really fine detail right there, molded in. The blackout around the window molding seems all right. Oh, look at this! I didn't even see it before. Look at these vertical strikes, and they're way, they're quite deep. So. Interesting, interesting. I think this is a real, yeah, that should be black, but I can understand Kyosho passing on that. The rear wheels don't really want to spin either. The wheels are okay. You know, there's air passing between the thin spokes, so that's nice. And it would have a center, uh, center knockoff uh, nut there. So the interior, you can see the roll cage. There's a whole bunch of roll cage going on. It's pretty low because this clear plastic is here, so they can't really jam it up too much higher. So the back end, yeah, nice printing. Alpha 155, the alpha badge there in the middle looks nice. I mean, it's really colorful, right? a lot of different colors. Super thick tail lights there, look all right. A little painted black there. I think that's where the license plate goes on the regular cars. And then, yeah, we got some silver paint going around the three-dimensional exhaust tip set there. So, yeah, look at this. Well, that's interesting. I see. So that's why they put the box around it. You know, to help smooth the uh, airflow, to help create more vacuum. I guess if there wasn't this surface here, you just have all the, you know, the exhaust tips and it'd create a lot of turbulence probably as the air passes underneath. Uh, that's my guess. Uh, racing slicks, okay, so that makes sense. And then it's nice to see this is screwed together in case you want to modify it. It's just, yeah, those tires, I think. Those could be the some of the worst, if not the worst, Kyosha tires I've ever seen. They're just so flat. They're so slab-sided. Okay. Now, yeah, that interior is going to be really hard to tell. Well, look at the back. That's a fuel cell or something in the back. And then the front, well, that's a hard one. The windows are so blocked off as it is. I can't see anything. But, well, maybe from here. So on the left side, you can see some extra control boxes, maybe a telemetry system or data loggers or something. I don't know. There's a middle console with some details. And then... Uh, Unfortunately, we can't really see the racing seat too much. Maybe there. This is a crazy looking steering wheel slash binnacle. Like, look how long the binnacle is. And then it leads to a really small diameter steering wheel. So that's that's quite interesting. That's uh, one of the most interesting interiors I've seen. I have to imagine that's realistic to the real car. It's quite nice. I mean, it's nice to see such a small steering wheel because a lot of racing steering wheels are quite small. Hmm. All right. So this wing here, I guess that's the last thing to talk about. It's it's all right. It's not super thick. It seems uh, relatively okay. It doesn't match the photographs we're looking at here, but maybe the road-going cars had wings like this. 
if there were road going cars, I would assume that they must have had street legal versions for homologation. Or maybe not. Uh, I'm not sure. Maybe this is just a white color that Kyosho did for the heck of it. Please leave a comment if you know. These are really interesting mirrors. They're like torpedo mirrors or something, but they do seem uh, accurate to the real car. Okay, well, I gotta say, this is one of the most interesting castings I've seen in a while. Partially because uh, this is so much weird aerodynamic bodywork on this thing. That, those mirrors, I mean, look how far forward this thing is. I, I don't know if you, I don't know if you would call that a bumper or, or not. I mean, the bumper is really here, right? But this front splitter or whatever, or chin sp spoiler, it's sticking out quite a bit. And again, I have to imagine it's to create more downforce because the, the longer this whole bottom pan is, the more suction it's going to create. That's the only thing I can imagine, but you know, like, uh, I might also be totally wrong there, so I apologize again. Okay, well, that's enough uh, speculation, I guess. But that's... <laughs> Kind of one of the reasons why I'm collecting all these cars. Uh, I just find it interesting to try to learn. Now, sadly, it seems like I learned a lot of the wrong information, and I passed that along to you guys, but if someone wants to write, start writing scripts for me, I'd be more than happy to read them. All right, so, yeah, it's an interesting model. Naturally, I would have preferred the race version, but I'm sure that costs a lot more. So I passed on it, just got this road one. And uh, the only other DTM car I think I can I'll show that it is a CLK. This is also by Kyosho. And uh, so it's possible. Well, now, this, I think Kyosho actually wrote, this is a 2000, no, C209, sorry. I thought it was 2009, it's this body code C209. I don't know if these two would have been racing against each other or for real or not. They're definitely both, well, sorry, tough to say. This one's livery, I think, makes me think this was racing in Japan, like in the Autobox Super GT series. But somewhere along the lines, you know, CLK DTMs are racing in the DTM. I think that's why they were designed in the first place. All right, well, if you like race cars, if you like Italian cars, you might want to look up one of these things. It's the Kyosho Alfa Romeo 155 uh, V6 Ti. Oh, and now I'm realizing there's actually four Alfa Romeo collections. I thought they only had three. So there's at least four of these collections out there. So interesting to know. All right, guys. Well, thanks for watching again. I'll see you around.